Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Tech.io podcast. Uh, today we're delighted to interview Arne from Babbel. A uh, little bit of context before we start. Uh, we are going to talk about EdTech uh, in general. Uh, as you know, or you may not know, uh, Europe is home to quite a significant amount of uh, interesting EdTech companies, uh, including the likes of Kahoot, Brainly, GoStudent, Multiverse, and the list goes on and on. Uh, but one of them is a company that was born in Berlin back in 2007, I believe. Uh, picked up more than $30 million in funding along the way, and I would say only that much along the way, uh, and is now one of the most used uh, subscription-based language learning platforms on the planet. Uh, we're, of course, talking about Babbel. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined here today by Arne Schepke. He, is, he joined the company back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, and he's been CEO for a couple of years now. Arne, welcome to the show. Uh, did you actually know that Babbel or Babylon in Dutch, which is my native language, means to have a chat. Um, I, my Dutch is not that good, I admit. Um, but there is, there's quite a few languages where there are um, versions of that. I think there's a dialect in, in German as well where it means to, to have a very casual and fun chat. So There you go. So you know the meaning. Uh, we're going to have a, a friendly, casual chat ourselves, uh, which I'm, I'm really delighted uh, by. Um, why don't you kick off by telling us in your own words uh, what Babbel is, or at least uh, strives to be? Yeah, sure. And um, great to great to be here, uh, Robin. Thanks for 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 having me. And um, Babel is the you know, most um, sold language learning app um, you know, worldwide. We obsess over actually getting you conversational, so it's it's not to toy around with the language or just teach you a bit of vocab and, and grammar. It's actually to get you to a point where you can use the language in real life and have a conversation with another human being that you care about um, strike you know conversations and and then obviously connections with with others um, that you know, broaden our horizons and and improve our, our our lives in one way or another um, and one of the things that keeps me going is getting those stories back from our from our learners we we call our learners motivated learners because we we try to get you further than a lot of other tech only players um, so we we don't just want you to you know, use the app, but we actually want you to, to have outcome to be able to, to have that conversation that I just uh, just mentioned, which I think is very, very, very different. Um, so one of the things we do differently, for example, is we have almost 200 linguistic and didactic experts working at Babel um, and obsessing over getting the content right, um, the learning flows right, the loops right. You know, um, and I'm very, very happy that we're uh, broadly considered the quality leader in the in the digital learning space. Very nice. That's a really good uh, summary. Uh, now I'm going to tackle this subject uh, early on in this interview, uh, just to get it out of the way. Uh, but Bubble uh, famously attempted to do an IPO back in uh, 2021 when you were already CEO, uh, an offering that ultimately failed to materialize because of poor market conditions at the time. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but market conditions haven't exactly uh, improved uh, in the last uh, uh, 18 months or so. Uh, they've been way worse than they were when that happened. Uh, so what are the chances of Bubble still pursuing a public listing in the near future? Yeah, no, obviously get asked that question quite uh, quite, a, quite a lot. And I think in, Sorry for that. <laughs> in hindsight, no, it's cool. Um, in, in hindsight, a very, actually, I think in hindsight, a smart decision um, not to launch ourselves into, into that market. And yes, I don't think it has improved substantially um, since then. Um, we are in the fantastic position now where we you know, we're actually growing faster than we were back when we um, you know, went through the IPO process where the, the strategic growth levers are progressing well, our product, product is progressing well, um, and we're generating cash. So we're in no need, no rush to do anything. Um, so we have all the, the optionality and all the time in the world to do what's right for the, for the company and when it's right for the company. And so um, obviously looking at the, at the market and how it, um, improves or doesn't improve, but nothing, um, you know, nothing immediate. Fantastic. Um, can you elaborate a bit and be more specific on on the numbers? I mean, in terms of finance and user numbers uh, that you're currently seeing. I mean, I can I can share what's uh, what's out there. One of the benefits of being a private company is that uh, we don't have to speak about all the numbers <laughs> all the all the time. Um, so, um, as I said, growing growing faster um, than we were during the. Um, the IPO process, and um, you know, uh, I think our um, guidance was somewhere in the the, the mid-teens. Um, we're significantly above that now, um, and uh, the same is true for our, our roadmap, where um, we are we are building out our um, Babel Live business, which is the live tutoring part of the business. Again, we're putting the human 
you know, teacher um, besides our learners and giving you a more intense learning experience to take you take you further. And then the app kind of fills the fills the gaps um, and takes the repetitive uh, topics out of the um, out of the, the classroom, which makes the classroom experience better for the learner and for um, the the teacher. Um, so very very happy with that. The U.S. is continuing to to grow. Um, we just had a, a record month in November. We had another record month in um, in January. Um, and are, are you know, uh, obviously growing fast uh, year over year, which is exactly what um, we we believe. There's more learners out there who have a need for language learning, um, and that's exactly what we're what we're doing. Yeah, great and that you touched generating. on the U. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, great that you touched on the U.S. business because I read somewhere that you ha have over a million subscribers there already. Uh, you have a separate uh, CEO for the U.S. business, uh, Julie, who I uh, I've actually met in the Berlin office uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so what else can you tell us about the U.S. business? How crucial is it for you to succeed there? It's, uh, it's the core of our, our business now. It's the biggest single country or, or region. Um, and we're, um, you know, we're, we're now working on the, the LATAM businesses and, and Canadian businesses also out of, the, out of the U.S. I think one of the really good decisions back in 2015 was to send one of our founders over to the U.S. to, to build up the team so that you actually get the right local team in place, the right culture, the right connections back to um, back to our Berlin um, head office. Um, and it's really become one of our um, talent hubs and, and one of our uh, performance centers for, for Babel. And um, Julie not just leads the US team, but she also runs re revenue um, so globally. So basically our global um, CMO and chief sales officer at the, at the same time and does that very successfully. Fantastic. Um, let's talk about the, the products. Uh, Bubble uh, has more than just an online lang language learning app. Uh, you mentioned things like Babel Life. There's also Babel for Business. Um, can you elaborate on that one? And, and what else can we expect in the future? Is it going to be more product uh, diversification or what's going to happen? Yeah, and I think Babel, Babel for, for Business was one of those stories where we, we said no for a long, long time. Um, and at some point, we had so much inbound interest companies just saying, hey, can you just send me an invoice? I will, I will buy the, you know, um, the, the vouchers on your voucher website or something like that and just make sure you can send me an invoice. Um, <laughs> and we were, we were doing that through our customer service and already making uh, quite significant revenues without even having a link on our, on our website. So at some point we said, yes, um, spend a bit of time figuring out what does the business customer really, really need when it comes to language learning because here the learner is not the same as the, as the buyer. Um, and we've been very busy building out our, our B2B suite, which mainly revolves around tools that, that the, the buyer needs um, to, you know, for example, a user management suite when you know, Robin leaves the com uh, company and Arna joins that we can swap out the, um, the, the account, um, that type of um, user management reporting suites, uh, you know, access to the notification engine so that you can actually manage uh, engagement. Um, so. B2B is roughly one third of, of the language learning market globally. Um, so we, we think there is a ton of room uh, for, for growth ahead for us and, and it's growing very strongly. It's a typical B2B SaaS business and we work with a subscription type, type business model um, with very, very loyal customers, a good revenue retention rate and um, obviously looking to, to build that out and investing heavily, hiring sales staff um, and expanding that. Most recently we expanded our B2B offering to the, to the US. Um, and yeah, not looking, not looking back. I think one of the reasons why it's working so well for Babel is that I was talking about being the quality leader in the digital space. That's what the business customer actually cares about, right? Business customers have a higher need for, I really want my employees to you know, get better at talking to the clients or talking amongst themselves. Um, so as a business customer, you want the impact, the out outcome. Um, you don't just want the, um, the engagement um, or the fun of it. Yeah, well, from the sound of it, it sounds like you're going to double down on the products that you already have, or do you think we'll see new sort of new uh, types of products come out of? Yeah, and, and and I think for both B two B learners as well as uh, you know, private private learners, um, will will continue to to add new ways of learning. Right, um, we we launched ourselves on the road of creating a digital language learning ecosystem, so making sure we can connect different learning me methods with one another. I, I compare it to, to let's say, you know, sports. You, you run the same 10K um, every single day at the same speed, um, with the same incline, same everything. 
yeah, you're training, but your training effect is going to see diminishing returns really quickly. And the same happens with learning, right? If I use the, the same app, the same type of trainers, the same interaction with the language every single day, I'm still learning, but I'm learning slower than if I mix the, the stimuli. And that's what we want our learners to do because we actually want our learners to progress faster. Um, and so mixing live tutoring with the lessons and reviews in the app, mixing our podcast, which is an audio only, you know, on the go, on the move, uh, passive learning um, method with the, the, the app-based courses. That's where, you know, the next jump step in, in learning comes from. And that's proven successful. It's called blended learning, you know, in academia, it's not a, not a secret anywhere. <laughs> um, and we're, we're actually putting it into the digital space. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, this year and, and actually this week, uh, there's been quite a lot of talk about AI. Uh, and as I was researching for this interview, I caught on to the fact that you're quite critical or skeptical uh, about artificial intelligence. Uh, can you clarify your views on the technology as it stands today? Yeah, so uh, I think I, I said uh, it's the, the hype is overrated, and I don't think I'm the only one. Um, you know, you uh, you put AI on a on a presentation, it's worth two. Uh, you you put machine learning on the same presentation, it's worth one. And you put uh, none of the two, it's worth half. Um, so I, I don't think that's right. Um, is AI powerful? And do we do we actually use AI within Babel? Yes, we do. Um, we we knew it was powerful. Um, I always said it would it would happen. It, you know, the language models would would be strong enough to to replicate language. Um, we do see a big difference between a language model and language learning, right? Because um, you actually want to learn to converse with another human being, right? Um, you can use AI to do that, um, but you still want to talk to another human being. So, you know, language learning will not go away. We're actually seeing the the opposite effect of what you might expect um, since the launch of uh, ChatGPT in December. We actually saw an increase in interest in language learning, and that's you know Babel specific, but also general language learning. And the the explanation I have is, whenever something that's close to the use of language, the application of language arises, let's say a, a new Netflix series in another foreign language, right, um, that you watch in the original language, or now I can play with uh, with uh, OpenAI's models uh, in in other languages you interact with the language and you get more interested in actually speaking the language and actually striking a conversation and a, and a relationship with someone else in that language. So we actually see more interest in language learning and more interest in Babel since that happened. And obviously, you know, see plenty of applications within our own product and also for future learning methods um, with, with AI, no doubt. Great. Uh, Arna, you're now well over a thousand employees, I think, at Babel. Uh, from the looks of it, still hiring quite a lot of people uh, from what I saw on the website. Um, what's your take on the on the ongoing war for talent that we've seen play out over the last few years, not only in Berlin and in Europe, but but beyond in, in tech in general? Yeah, and, and, and I think it's it's testament to the fact that we're doing really well, that we're growing, that our strategy is working, um, and that we we have very 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 solid business model. We're generating cash, um, so yes, we are still hiring. We are investing into. Are we to be um, you know, a product and team? We're investing into into our live proposition. We're investing into new learning methods. We're investing into content. We're investing into technology. Um, investing into our, our US team. So yes, 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 yes. Um, and yes, please uh, submit your your applications. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we we have found hiring um, uh, quite uh, quite fast um, these days. Um, so intend to to take advantage of that, and also happy that there is companies that are still doing well and not talking about layoffs. Yeah, and on that note, I actually so one of the things that stands out for, uh, about Babel for me is that you've only raised uh, thirty million dollars in funding, a little over thirty million. Uh, and what what amazes me is that if, even in a year like twenty twenty one, when companies that were doing well, which Babel was already doing well at the time didn't actually raise like a heaps of funding to to accelerate growth um, why do you think that is well i think first of all we've we've always managed babel with a let's call it a sustainable growth uh, approach um so I, I never saw a reason to over invest into into growth right like you can theoretically pay 70 bucks for a new customer while the CLV is lower or you know 200 bucks for a customer while the CLV is lower it'll you know increase your growth uh, in the short term but unless there is a fundamental shift in the market happening you know crowding out the markets a winner takes it all type market 
there's no point in that. It's just burning cash, right? So we we always said, no, we're not going to do that. We want a sustainable approach, um, and we've grown um, as fast as made sense from uh, from a, from an efficiency point of view, and we've been cash cash flow positive since uh, for over a decade now. Um, so. We've always needed the, the cash that we raised to do something big and new, like launching into the US. That's an expensive endeavor. It takes time. It takes a lot of money. Um, we're talking about tens of millions. Um, and by now, we're large enough to be able to, to fund a lot of our investments from within. So when, let's say, the, the pandemic happened, we actually accelerated our marketing. We accelerated the spend. And not all of that was 100% you know, certain ahead of time that it would come back. It all did come back. Um, but we we went you know um, two digit million figure into our cash pool um, at the time and, and took a risk. Um, so that's where we use our our cash for. In general, it's very good these days to be cash uh, flow positive and cash generative. Um, and yeah, I've, you know, Babel has been called boring in my face uh, recently, <laughs> um, and and I'll take that as a praise as a as a good boring. Yeah, you should take it as a compliment in these conditions for sure. Uh, you guys also did something very cool uh, as a boring company last year uh, by offering Ukrainians uh, free access to your language learning tools, uh, in particular to make the lives of refugees uh, a bit easier uh, in, in tough times. Uh, how did that come about and what's the current status of the initiative? Yeah, it's, uh, it's still running. We have, I think, something like half a million um, learners learning actively with, with Babel right now. Um, and um, that's uh, Ukrainian to German to Polish or to, to English, um, pretty much across Europe, um, also in the Ukraine. And it's, it's, it's super rewarding to see how our product was able to help in a, in a situation of, of human crisis. Um, we did have <clears throat> experiences helping in, in refugee movements because we, we helped uh, the Berlin Senate back in 2016 during the, the um, Syrian uh, refugee movement. Um, and um, so very quickly, the team actually came to me and said, hey, we want to do this. Um, and no, I, I always say no, no business school class, no algorithm in the world would take that decision. But it was very, very fast. It was very clear to us that we had to do it because it was the right thing to do. Um, and not looking back, um, I think it's great how we were able to, to help um, and uh, very, very willing to, to go there again, um, as long as the opportunity costs are manageable. Yeah, well, great to hear. I, I applaud the initiative for sure. Um, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, good to get an update on Babel, as always. Uh, also good that you're uh, emphasizing sustainable growth, which is something, a uh, term that I use quite a lot in conversations as well. Um, anything else you would like people to take away from this conversation before we end? No, I think uh, keep on keep on learning languages. Um, we we just came out of a of a pandemic where you know, human to human connection um, has has gained value um, in all of our lives, um, and I also think in the current political environment, building bridges rather than walls is always a good thing. Well, that's a fantastic note to end on, uh, Arne. Thank you so much for your time, and best of luck with Babel. Right, thank you, Robin. See you.